Thank you, Madam Chair. It's good to be with you. Congratulations on your first hearing as Chair of the Subcommittee on Aviation Safety, Operation, and Innovation. And I look forward to continuing our partnership and to working with you in your new role as Chair of this new subcommittee. 13 months ago, we held the first congressional hearing on the role of global aviation in containing the spread of what was then a relatively new infectious disease, COVID-19. At the time of the hearing, on March 4th, 2020, none of us could have imagined the ultimate scope of this public health emergency, how quickly it would snowball into a full-blown crisis, and the pain that would, it would inflict on so many Americans' lives. Nor could we imagine the strain it would end up putting on our economy, and most notably, for the purpose of this hearing, on our travel sector. This time last year, barely 100,000 passengers were flying each day, compared with over 2 million at the same time the year before. Congress acted quickly through the CARES Act to provide relief to the nation, including the aviation sector, and to preserve millions of jobs. And Congress acted twice more to extend this relief. It is not an exaggeration to say that without it, tens of thousands of aviation professionals would have lost their jobs and this industry would have been irreparably damaged. What a difference a year makes though. Today, for more than 40 days in a row, more than 1 million passengers have flown in the United States. Over 50% of American adults have received at least one dose of a COVID vaccine and airlines are adding additional routes as demand for travel continues to pick up. In short, things are looking up. After an unprecedented economic downturn and months spent at home away from extended family and loved ones, it's time for Americans to be able to see friends and family and for the air travel industry to reemerge to continue providing safe, high quality air transportation to the flying public. As welcome as this turning of the corner is, we would be remiss if we walked away from this crisis without learning several important lessons. First, we need to be much better prepared to deal with a fast moving, far reaching crisis. This is particularly true for a crisis in which, through no fault of their own, American citizens are stranded abroad. As nations across the world locked down early on in the pandemic, the US government led a multi-stakeholder effort to repatriate Americans unable to get a flight home. That process was not without some turbulence. And even though we suddenly had a surplus of air, airplanes and pilots, getting foreign nations to help gather Americans in a central location, or just to let planes land at their airports, proved very difficult. Now that we are rounding the COVID corner, government and industry should sit down and try to strategize how to make any similar efforts in the future more effective and more efficient. Second, the government must learn how to better communicate with industry. From the outset, open dialogue with air carriers was critical to understanding their challenges. How or why certain dictates would be overly burdensome or ineffective. How government could assist with diplomatic issues and how government and industry could work collaboratively towards a goal of stopping the spread of COVID without killing the aviation industry. It was unfortunate that at many points, industry and regulators seem to be talking past each other rather than to each other. And I hope that moving forward, this is something we can rectify. Collaboration and communication, not commands and indignation are what is needed. Third, government must learn to communicate clearly and accurately with the American people. For example, based on all the available evidence, we know that it is safe to travel by plane when appropriate precautions are taken. The federal government must clearly communicate this fact to the public and begin to identify and off-ramp COVID medication practices as they become unnecessary. This is especially true for vaccinated Americans. New mandates or making permanent existing emergency mandates are the wrong way to go. I am very concerned by the discussion of things like requiring negative COVID tests to book a flight or a vaccine passport as a condition of travel. Concerns have grown throughout the pandemic related to privacy 
data security, disclosure of medical records, and, and what the permissible uses of confidential health information are. And I strongly believe that we need to endeavor to address these before we find ourselves in the midst of another crisis. Finally, the last lesson is one that I believe is most important to the carriers. It is clear that the aviation sector must find a way to be more resilient in the future. Although none of us could have predicted how quickly COVID would devastate aviation. I strongly believe that industry will miss an important opportunity if it doesn't come out of this crisis thinking long and hard about how to harden itself to future crises so it doesn't find itself in another situation where Congress must step in to guarantee workers' payroll. Today, this subcommittee will hear testimony from important stakeholders in the aviation industry, as well as a leader in public health who has studied COVID's transmissibility in airports and on airplanes. It is my hope that this hearing can be used to outline what we got right over the last year and also what must still be done by various stakeholders, Congress included, to instill confidence in the safety of commercial aviation so that Americans can get, get back flying safely again and this vital industry can rebound with gusto. Thank you.